This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today we are taking a look at this. This is Microsoft's new Surface Go 3. We're gonna be testing this out using the old pen. We're also gonna be testing this out using the new Slim Pen 2. Let's see how it works. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and you know what we're doing today. We're taking a look at this, the Surface Go 3. Three. This is also known as Microsoft's budget surface, the cheapest one you can buy. And one of the problems it's had in the past is it's been a little bit underpowered. I totally get why this is so appealing to so many people. You have that Surface Pro form factor with the hinge and the type cover and it's super portable, but it's half the price and it's super cute. But after using it for a few days, I can still say that it's still too underpowered for art and illustration. Now last year when I reviewed the Surface Go 2, I did get some criticism for the way I reviewed it, mainly because as soon as I got it, I took it out of S mode. Many of you said that by taking it out of S mode, I was using it in a way that Microsoft never intended it to be used. And many of you felt that because of the way I tested it, me calling it underpowered by using it outside of S mode was just unfair to the product. And I think that's a valid point. Because of that, I've decided to structure this review a little bit differently. So that's what I did. For the first half of this review, I used this in S mode. Now, some of you are probably wondering, What's S mode? What S mode does is it improves performance and security by limiting what apps you're able to run on your Windows device. You can only download apps that are available from the Windows store. Now in the past, this has been a pretty big obstacle for artists because there've only been a handful of programs and they weren't always that good. Nowadays that's changed. There's some good stuff out there, sketchable, Concepts, Leonardo, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, all of that is in the Microsoft Store, and Adobe apps should be coming in the future at some point in time. So I need an art project to work on while I'm doing this review. Shout out to Elliot Degato for sending over this illustration for me to draw in my style. If you wanna be featured in a future review, tag one of your pieces with my name on Instagram and I'll see it there, and there's a chance you'll be in one of these videos. All right. Onto the specs. This is the base model. I picked up this one because the question I always get is, is the base model good enough? And that's what I wanted to find out. Overall, I think the screen looks good. This is a touch screen. It has a resolution of 920 by 1280. Doesn't sound like much, but on a 10 inch screen, it looks good. Under the hood, we have a dual core Intel Pentium Gold 6500Y processor. If you jump up to a higher model, you can get an i3 in this. This one has four gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of storage with an option for eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. There is some good news here. If you do need more storage, and you probably will need more storage, there is a micro SD card slot along the back underneath the kickstand. We have a back facing camera that's eight megapixels and we have a front facing camera that's five megapixels. But the cool part about that front facing camera is it does full 1080p for video calls. I also picked up the optional keyboard accessory for this one because I like it. Typing out it feels really good. I like folding it up, carrying this thing around like a notebook. But also I find that Windows is just much easier to use if you have access to a keyboard. You don't need it, but it's nice to have. So let's take a look at this S mode experience. I did find some drawing apps in the Microsoft store. I mentioned those earlier. I tried out Sketchable first. Now I did get spoiled over the last few weeks because I was testing out the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Laptop Studio which are compatible with the Slim Pen 2, and the drawing experience using that pen is dramatically better than what Microsoft has offered in the past. So grabbing the old pen and sketching on this in Sketchable did feel like a step down, a step backwards. Performance-wise, Sketchable wasn't bad. It's a pretty lightweight app. Sketching with a pencil was fun. Once I moved over to drawing in ink, it was a little bit more touch and go. And at this point, it's probably more of the performance of the pen than it is the performance of the computer. Next up, I decided to boot up Concepts. I don't use Concepts much, so here I was getting really frustrated. The pressure of these pens, no matter which one I tried, just seemed completely out of control. It was almost like it was ignoring how hard I was pressing on the pen. But really what was driving me nuts were the hand gestures and just how hit and miss they were. Trying to pinch to zoom in or out more often than not left a bunch of marks on my page instead of actually zooming in or zooming out. Same thing with panning around. This app also supports using two finger touch to undo, which is something I absolutely love in drawing apps. But here it just... It, it didn't work 80% of the time. It, it, was, it was truly frustrating. At one point, I was so frustrated trying to undo so many times, I went to flick off the app and then I realized, 
Camera's recording. This is a safe for work show, Brad. I did the peace sign instead. I'm such a dork. So like I said, I don't use concepts that much. So I didn't know, is this a Brad problem? Is this an app problem? Is this a Surface Go problem? So I went to the Surface Pro 8 that I had just finished reviewing the other day and I booted up concepts on that. It turns out, Concepts is a very good drawing app. I was having fun. It was really good. It was really performant. Pressure sensitivity was wonderful. Palm rejection was wonderful. Being able to pinch to zoom and pan around the image, it was all great. It was night and day. And so that leads me to believe that the performance that I was getting, the very poor performance I was getting, was based on the Surface Go's processing and not the actual app. I opened up some other apps to try some things out just to see how it would go, and my experience was pretty much the same thing. My experience was, even in S mode, things were just way too slow. Even the interface felt laggy. With nothing else running, I still felt it took a beat or two too many to open a folder. Even interface elements, which usually on Windows are just instantaneous, like checking your battery or where the audio is, took a couple beats to actually think about and open. Same thing with searching websites. I went to eBay, I was just clicking on items. I was trying to scroll. It was just really kind of laggy. And I was experiencing all of these things with nothing else running. This isn't like me jumping between email and the web and then something else and checking a widget. No, this is just nothing going on with Windows and me trying to open something up. So after going through all that, I decided to take it out of S mode. I like drawing an Adobe app, specifically Adobe Fresco works really well on the other surfaces that I tested. So I decided to use that here. It's a really nice touch friendly interface. At this point, I'm not gonna go through every Every single app I could think of and really say, wow, this was slow and it didn't work. I'm not gonna belabor that point. I think you guys got it. Overall, I don't think this runs as well as Windows 11 should run or as well as Microsoft wants Windows 11 to run. And we're talking about in S mode or out of S mode. And I'm sorry, Elliot, that your artwork is turning out so poorly here. I went onto the iPad, I finished this in Procreate just, just to have a nice version for you. All right, need to talk about the pen. But before I get to it, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights, all in one easy-to-use platform. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features that you need to make your products look their best online. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, time to talk about this pen. I'm using the standard Surface Pen for most of what I'm doing here, but I did test out the new Slim Pen 2. The Slim Pen 2 works so well on the Surface Pro and this laptop studio. On the box, it says that it is not compatible with the Go 3, but if you go to Microsoft's website, it says the Slim Pen 2 is compatible with the Go 3, among many other older surfaces. And if you go into the settings, you can pair this pen, but, I would not recommend it. First of all, the line is just jitter city. The quality is horrible. And what makes it worse is it's off by like eight to 10 pixels. So it's not accurate at all. Doing something simple like drawing a circle and then drawing another circle inside of it is almost impossible because of the offset. Now my other reviews, I mentioned that I was testing out the Slim Pen 2 also with older Surfaces device, specifically the Surface Pro 7 from two years ago. I think what a lot of people wanna know is can I just buy this new Slim Pen and use it on an older Surface or a more inexpensive Surface and get that better drawing experience. And now that I have tested it in several different scenarios and several different versions of Windows, I, I'm pretty solid in saying, no, that's not gonna help you. In fact, I found the pen to be worse on older devices than anything else. The website isn't lying. This is compatible with older surfaces. However, the lines that it leaves on older surfaces are not pretty. Now the old pen, that still works and it works better, but it's still just as inconsistent as it's always been. I talked about my experiences in concepts and what was happening there with the pressure just not feeling quite right and the pen just not quite feeling as accurate as I wanted it to. 
And that was pretty much my experience across the board. When I pull up a pencil tool and accuracy didn't really matter and I was just sketching things out, things could be fun and I could move fast and it wasn't too bad. And so some of my early impressions when using the pen were, were pretty solid. But as soon as I got into that finished line work and I wanted things to look professional and polished and I needed to be accurate, that's, that's where the pen was falling down on me, which is pretty consistent with what I've seen from older Surface Pens for years now. And is the main reason I was so excited that the Slim Pen 2 works so well on the new devices. And it's a bummer that it wasn't incorporated here on the Surface Go 3. So this is the part of the video where I tell you what I really think about the Surface Go 3, and I'm, I'm sorry. This has been a bummer of a review, and I know a lot of people want to know, hey, can, can I get this really cool tablet? Because it is a cool looking tablet. And can I pay a fraction of the cost and still get a lot of that cool factor that a lot of people see in the Surface Pro? But unfortunately, especially for drawing, there's just too many trade-offs. Now, obviously I didn't test the version with an i3 processor and eight gigabytes of RAM. I think that's gonna perform better. How much better? I'm, I'm not really sure. The other thing that you do need to consider is you need to get a keyboard cover and you also need to get a pen. So that $400 price is just your base starting price. You're really looking at maybe 550 to 600. When you're looking at $600, you could get an iPad mini with an Apple Pencil or the standard iPad with an Apple Pencil for far less. There's also some really fantastic Android tablets for quite a bit less than this. Or if you want to spend around that same price, not too long ago, I saw the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, not the S7 Plus, but the S7, last year's top of the line Android tablet for like $520. I'll throw a link to where I saw that price and also my review down below in the description so you could check it out if you're interested. Or you could check all that out on brad.site, my website where I rank a lot of the tech that I review here. A lot of people are gonna look at the Surface Go and comment here and go, no duh, Brad, this isn't built for art and illustration. But overall, my feelings was th this wasn't really particularly good at surfing the internet or checking email. It, everything that I was doing just felt a couple beats too slow. And if you're going to be doing that little with your computer, then I think an Android tablet or an iPad is a better option. Want to run concepts? Runs far better on Android. Need Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo? Guess what? They both run extremely well on the base level iPad. To me, it seems like the real benefit of a Windows tablet over any other tablet is you get all of Windows, you get that full operating system. But if you get a tablet that can't really run that operating system well enough, it really negates the benefits. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.